This is a very exciting subject that you're going to be talking with me about today. China has made an artificial sun. Yes. I'm just like, I thought we had a sun already. I didn't know we needed a new sun, but I guess it's cool to have one because of all the solar implications, right? Yeah, it's always good to have a spare of anything, I guess. Um, <laughs> Sure, yeah, sure. Exactly. Um, so, like, the artificial sun is kind of China's buzzword for it, but it's actually a bit more of a mouthful um, what this thing stands for. It's called the Experimental Advanced Superconducting Tokamak. It's a type of nuclear fusion reactor. It's not the first of its kind, but the reason why it's been making headlines last week and this week as well is it was able to maintain a temperature of 158 million degrees Fahrenheit, which is around five times as hot as the sun, for 1,056 seconds, That's around just over 17 minutes, I believe. It wow. smashed previous records. So hotter than the sun. Hotter than the sun. It, it needs to be hotter than the sun. Like, we'll probably go into those reasons in a second, but it needs to be that hot. Really what it is, is just like this big kind of like coils of plasma inside a donut-shaped like reactor that's being contained by magnets. Um, which hopefully one day we'll be able to make um, energy from. But this is very early stages right now. That's so exciting. So what is the difference between fission and fusion? Because I hear these two terms a lot, and I'm not really a physics expert, but it's all very important stuff for keeping everybody alive, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, actually, one can one is quite good at also endangering life too. So fission is the one that like I'm referring to here. Fission is when we have like, a load of very heavy kind of um, like elements like plutonium, like uranium, we fire a neutron into them and it splits them apart. And that splitting apart also releases a lot of energy. Now we use that in nuclear reactors to like make energy. We've also used it in the past in like bombs, in nuclear bombs, in thermonuclear bombs um, to cause immense devastation. But either way you look at it, fission is the splitting of the atom. Now fusion is something that we haven't ever been able to achieve in terms of like producing enough energy to be worth doing it yet but it's the thing inside like stars like so fusion is the thing that happens inside the hearts of stars under immense pressure and like high temperatures you get smaller elements like hydrogen that can form together to make heavier elements helium and release energy as a consequence now the reason why that's way more exciting than fission is fission produces a loads of dangerous like radioactive waste and byproducts and stuff Fusion doesn't, and fusion is also produces a lot more energy if you're able to get it going right. So that's the difference between the two. Now, the more important question is, is that how does the fusion reactors work? Because, like, this is the actual thing that's happening here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on Earth, we're not really able to kind of, cr like, create the pressures that you would see at the heart of the sun. You need so much mass like squished together into doing that. But what we can do is we can make things very, very hot. In fact, we can make them way hotter than the sun. So what we do is we get all of this like plasma, we stick it inside a fusion reactor, we heat it up with magnets, sending a current around it sometimes. Um, that's one of the common ways. You can also use lasers to heat it up as well. But I think the kind of the, the kind of most common and most popular method right now is with magnets. You heat that plasma up so much until like what is inside that plasma tends to be isotopes of hydrogen combined together, release energy. And that's how we're able to do it. The only problem right now, um, and we're kind of, I imagine we're going to get onto this, but like the only problem we have right now is we put a load of energy in to make that happen. We can't get as much out. So we're not actually making energy on this thing. Oh, goodness. So what, what are their plans for this? Um, I guess it's to build bigger and bigger reactors, get more and more plasma inside, heat it up to hotter temperatures, and find better ways to heat it up. So they're just trying to make the whole thing way more efficient, like in every way that you can look at it, but mm -hmm. also just expand the base of like how much plasma you can have at these temperatures. And then like just iterate and hope that that improves enough for us to have a good energy source because we can make fusion happen. Like fusion is a thing that we can do. It's just about the energy kind of optimization of it that we're really stuck on right now. I mean, you know, efficiency is is helpful. And and how does this compare to the other reactors that they've been having so far? Um, so look, the, the East reactor is the most promising of the ones that we've seen, but then you could probably say that at any point in history, right? Like the current reactor is the most prominent, like promising one that, that looks like, but it's also, there is a really big reactor that's coming in, in into play, 
um, that should be coming online in, in a few years. Mm -hmm. um, it's called the ITER reactor. They're building it at the moment in um, in Marseille in France. And it's the it's a it's an international collaboration. So every state in the European Union, the UK, Switzerland, China, India, um, and the US as well. So all of these like in the, all of these states are getting together to build this one reactor. It's going to be the biggest one there is. And they're hoping, especially using this data from East, that they can like make this process more and more like efficient. But I, I can't say, and I don't think anyone else really can either, when it will become efficient. There's like a common joke among like people who are into fusion that fusion like fusion energy is only 30 years away and always will be. Like it's this idea that it, like as advancements increase, we realize how how much more we have to learn before we can do it. But there's a load of promising kind of. Um, movements in this field so it's, it's exciting in that way i guess and, and this and this artificial sun that's hotter than the sun feels like it's like stepping stones to get there right yeah exactly exactly so any fusion reactor does need to be hotter than the sun to work because it doesn't have those pressures but the fact that they're able to make this thing last as long as it did um they also like they also broke another record with it um back in like may of last year it ran for 101 seconds at, at 216 million fahrenheit which is I'd like it's it's like the hottest that we've ever been able to make anything um and the core of the actual sun by contrast reaches temperatures of around 27 million fahrenheit so we're, we're doing good at heating things up we just need to find a way to get the energy out of that goodness goodness it's getting me all hot flashes just thinking about it <laughs> well this is very exciting news ben i can't wait to see what more comes of it yeah me too i'll be following it keenly all right we'll look forward to that thanks again okay thank you